One of the things that is very important to people is their physical appearance because that is your outward looking aspect on, on society. And you can imagine if you have part of your face missing, how difficult that is to live with. I got introduced into additive manufacturing about 10 years ago now and realized at that time that additive manufacturing is an ideal opportunity to produce uh, customized prosthesis for patients who've lost part of their facial features. For example, this is a patient who had an asymmetry of the lower jaw, and so we made a prosthesis for this patient um, using selective laser melting technologies in titanium, but every one has to be customized to the individual patient. Well, right at the beginning, I think, when we first got introduced to the 3D color printing technology, the minute we saw that, I think I realized the potential of how we could use that technology in this particular area of application. And then, by luck, I suppose, uh, met up with uh, Tom Fripp from Fripp Design and Engineering, who happened to have one of the, these new machines. And so we got together and started planning how we might make these soft tissue prostheses. Frick Design used to be very much a design consultancy company. We first bought into the technology of 3D printing quite a long time ago, and through that technology we came into contact with Sheffield University. We're very much now focused as a research and development company as well as an industrial design company. What we've got on screen here now is the scanned patient with the trauma area obviously being the nose here depicted in the centre of the screen. This area in particular is critical in terms of getting the end prosthesis to match up. The best way in terms of a nose to fill this is actually by one of our stock items. So we've got something that could be considered quite Caucasian, right the way through to a sort of um, Afro-Caribbean and quite wide nostril set. Okay, so once we've decided on the stock item, we can bring that in to actually meet our trauma area. Now this, this situation is all about aligning the two. This CAD model and these screenshots will be actually sent to the maxillofacial technician on, on hand to actually approve or suggest improvements to the alignment. We're not looking to replace the maxillofacial technologies, but we're looking to replace them, the detailed, the time-consuming, expensive manufacturing side of the, of the work that they do. We still need the maxillofacial technologies to interface with the patients we do the manufacturing, but then they do the fitting as well with the patients to make sure that the patient is satisfied with what has been produced. And they will sometimes make some changes to the prosthesis to, to, to meet the patient's very personal, specific needs. So that's a case of deleting some of the more obvious overlaps. Obviously you've got eyeballs and you've got mouth and you've got obviously a moustache in this patient's case to consider. So what we actually use for this situation is the, the freeform arm. What we're looking at doing now is really looking at deleting some of the areas of the stock part so it blends in with the trauma area seamlessly. So much the same way as a sculpture carves in silicon or clay. This process takes from start to finish roughly around about two to three hours. Our prosthesis have to actually match this area completely we actually create and print the, what we call mating face so it perfectly sits on that trauma area. Once we're happy with the actual overall shape and the blended edges and everything like that, we're actually going to add some detail. So this is, gives us the opportunity to actually add wrinkles, pores, creases, lines if you like. We find by emphasising these in the CAD programme, the actual finished printed result is actually a lot more subtle. So once we're happy with that, it's over to the manufacturer. The speed is a real advantage to patients. We can actually manufacture within about 48 hours, which means that um, a patient is waiting less time. The ones which we manufacture, they're far cheaper in terms of materials. And finally, if their prosthesis wears out, we can obviously print again within 48 hours. Okay, so this is the final result. What we've got here is the fully infiltrated and dried prosthesis. So you can see we've got everything intact. We've got a nice clear feathered edge, which gives it a nice really soft blended edge to, the, to meet the, uh, the good tissue on the, on the patient. We've got all the nice fine detail, we've got really nice sort of definition of the pores and the lines and the wrinkles and we've got the, the, the beautifully mated face essentially, this, this area here just here which will create a nice adhesive um, bond, nice flat, flat area for the, uh, for the prosthesis to join the, the outside of the trauma area essentially. One instance we've, we've done quite recently is a lady who's never had a lip before so we've actually managed to create a lip for them for the first time and it's, you know, it's a joyous occasion to actually see someone feel a part of their face they've never felt before. 
Well, in business terms, financially, it's been very good for us. Having teamed up with the University of Sheffield, um, as well as a major grant um, source, um, has obviously provided us with a good steady income for the last three years. Um, it's enabled us to develop um, high technology products and actually own rights to those products. Um, and we certainly couldn't have done that without the backup and support of Sheffield University. It's fantastic to have such a big well-known partner uh, uh, involved with us um, and the credibility that comes with um, partnering up with somebody like that is fantastic for us. Um, and finally, um, it's brilliant to have such a great resource to sat on our doorstep. Additive manufacturing is already influencing how we treat patients, but the technology is moving on so fast that um, the potential for solving problems in the future is enormous.